good sized rocks for throwing. Just wait until the mean men leave, and. Well, possibly it's your choice of weapon. I saw you throw that stone. It was a good throw, but you shouldn't be mad about missing. As I said, perhaps it's just that you didn't choose a suitable weapon. It used to be great here. I had a fort and everything. And then... And then the company came. I don't even live here. But I can't stand to see somebody wreck it. Hmm. Do you know what this is? A slingshot. Or a catapult. Why aren't you trying to stop me? Well, sometimes it's necessary to fight back. They're all leaving. I can play here tomorrow. You see, it's all a matter of assembling the correct weapon. Hello, Srila. Hello. How did you find me? Your room number is on the hospital computer. You know, in a funny way, I almost expected you to show up. Really? For a while, I forgot about you. I'd say that in all these years, I've thought about you maybe a dozen times. But then, of course, with all this, I've been thinking a lot of strange thoughts lately, looking back on things. And then I started thinking about you again. <sighs> we had quite a time, didn't we? Yes, we did. I'd almost convinced myself that it never happened. But of course, it was a dream back then. I could always be a dream now. That's a spirit. You never were exactly reassuring. How's Ace? Keeping busy. I don't really keep in touch with anyone from those days. Not that there are many of them left. What's about Mitch, eh? A shame. I thought he had it coming. I liked his little sister, though. I used to see her from time to time. Nice kid. I wonder how she's doing. She's dead. Christ. How? Natural causes. You mean her immune system went? There's a lot of it about. She must have been ten years younger than me, and I'm not that old myself. It's funny, really. That time with you, I could have been killed so easily. You had the years in between. Just a postponement. That's all anyone has. Listen. Yes? You rescued me once before. Can you do it again? No, I didn't think so. So what do you want? I need your help. Oh, come on. Me? Help you? Now? I need your help with this. Double-spaced, large lettering. Are you sure telekinesis is a word you want? Pretty good. A few too many adjectives, but it's my style. It would certainly fool my editors. You want me to claim authorship of this? Yes. I'm a science writer. The phenomenon you're describing falls into the category of pseudoscience. Superstition. I'd like you to put your name on it and... And send it to your editor. Now look at me. I'm one of the few journalists alive today who have never lied in my writing and I've made damned few mistakes. The ones I have made I have corrected as quickly as I could. I've certainly never delivered propaganda. I know. At this point in my life, I don't have a hell of a lot left. No. And now you want to take that away. It's necessary. What will you use it for? Disinformation. To confuse enemy. Tell me. Who is the enemy this time? You know what I think sometimes. I think sometimes that perhaps you're the enemy. 
I'll tell you what. There's something you can do for me. You see the window there? Tell me what I would see if I could walk to it. Hmm. It looks down on the wall of another building. There's a concrete walkway in between. And if I could stand down there by the wall, what would it be like? There'd be walls around you. You could feel air coming from the ventilators of the building opposite. The air's warm. It smells like small animals. Animals in the laboratory. I couldn't see any green if I was standing out there. Any trees? No. What about the fields from the hospital? The grass is all yellow on them. There were some trees there, but they're gone now. That field is called the Scrubs, where the prison used to be. Before they built the prison, it was a common. Once, they had a fair on it every spring. When was that? A long time ago. Was it green then? Very green. There were birds wading in the water. Could you see any people? No. It must have been nice then. Listen, they keep upping my medication. If you've been in the hospital computer, you'll know what my status is. How long have I got? Weeks? Days? Hours? Well then, I'd better get started then. Kept trees clear by the mountains at Anne Marie's request. Catterson, Lindhurst, Mancuso, interesting group. On. Television. News investigator. Oh, Patrick's been fooling with the settings again. Jack blood mode and far too close. Move hologram back. Alright, go ahead. News interpretation. Selection taken according to the profile set on August the 10th this year. Increasing instability in weather patterns. Skip. A report on environmental. Skip. An article describing telekinetic powers from the London. Interesting. The Sunday Times Insight team has learned that biochemistry boffins are baffled by an article written by Srila Govindia, a highly respected scientific journalist, Dusky Beauty. Just summarize. The article goes on to describe how certain blood proteins may indicate the presence of strange mental powers in human beings. Explain. What kind of powers? No more information available. Okay, hold it. Link with the office computer. Cross-reference with that news item. Find out the location of the scientific journalist, and ask her to fly out to New York. Book a company apartment at the King Building. Reference? Govindia, Srila. Journalist, deceased, death, recorded 11.30am, local time, Hammersmith Hospital, London, England. Cause of death, autoimmune disease. Okay, memo to all departments. Special attention, social and biological stock acquisition. Attach copies of the article and get a hard copy for me. Enclose a memo with the article requesting that everyone keeps their eyes open for any signs of unusual blood tests and cross-reference with the database and see if there's any more technical literature you can pull out. Make a list of the blood proteins until acquisition to test for them. If we find any stock reading positive, fly them straight out here from the King Building. Put a priority on this and offer a bonus. Filed. Ready for action tomorrow. Television off. But what do you think? Is Chuck going to hell? I don't know. Now, are you going to help me with this? Of course. Now, which to go for? The man or the woman? That would mean you worry too much. But did you see the look she gave us? The food was fine. That was a good shot. Had to make sure brain functions are undamaged. Here comes the ambulance. We can't freeze up here all night. Come on. What are you two doing with that? Another of Bio's stock acquisitions. Need to know bases, Chavez. Aren't you supposed to be on level 70 to 75 duty tonight, Chavez? Yes, sir. Just finishing up in the lobby first. Ungrateful bastards. Better get upstairs. Ah! Oh, damn cat. Ex 
Excuse me. Hmm? Do you have clearance for this area? Oh, I've got clearance, but only because I've hacked into your security system. I'm an intruder. What's this? Company envelope. I thought there'd be a B and an I on it. You can't print it on there. You can't address it to anyone either. It's for keeping documents in. It's got to be blank to stop visual penetration, reading the documents inside. You know, satellites, that sort of thing. Hmm, I like it. I think I'll keep it. I could punch the alarm anytime I want. Oh, I don't doubt it. I wonder if you're going to, though. Why don't you sit down? I don't think so. Sit down. You're in pain. What makes you think that? The way you hold yourself. The way you move. How long has it been bad? A long time. It won't go on too much longer. No, it won't. You said you were an intruder? Oh, at the very least. And you can do whatever you like. But I'd better tell you about security. If you make a run for it, they're happy to use what they call ultimate force. And I'm gonna call them now. But you don't have to do that. I think I do. No. You don't have to call the security guards because they're already on their way. Caught in the act. Oh, my god, you scared me. You're going to have to be more careful than that, Maria. You were ringing bells all over the network. We got a security flash down on level 51. Do you have any idea what a phone call costs these days? Besides, I've done it before. Well, don't do it again. And definitely don't do it on this node. Sorry, guys. You're gonna get fired when someone finds out. <sighs> Come on, Christian. We'd better get back to the lab. That was close. Yes. How long have you worked in this building? Always for the Butler Institute? No. Anywhere in the building, really. But who pays you? Surely that's the Butler Institute. Always. Is that everything? For now. I'm far from finished here. Goodbye. Take me with you? No. Why not? Because of 51. What? The 51st floor in this building. You know what goes on there? No. Hmm, yes. You've known for years. And you've let it happen. Now, as I've said before, and I shan't say it again, goodbye! to take off like that. Perhaps because I'm paying them. Paying? Who the hell are you? I'm the doctor, and we need to talk. Bobby Prescott, why were you here? When the riots were on? I was here because I wanted to save the books. And how did you intend to do that? Stopping the kids. They're little animals. The only time when they read a word is when it's on a computer screen. That's the way I imagine them. In their warm little bedrooms with computers mommy and daddy bought for them. Light from the screen on their faces and their little lips are moving as they struggle to get to the next word and on to the next game. Most of them can't even read that much. They have to have pictures on their screens and stupid headphones in their ears with their so-called actors. Why do you kill them, Bobby Prescott? Who cares? Is it because they are different? You want to know who's different? I'm different. Out on the steps with those kids, they were fixing to kill me. And I'm sorry about that. They got carried away. They had the knife already going into my throat! I should have got them right there. You ever see anyone die? I don't mean die in bed when they're 80. I mean die in the streets when they're young and think they can live forever. And they always beg or scream or just go out of their minds, but not me. Not on those steps. You're damned right I'm different. I'm strong. I'm the iron that has been strengthened in the fire. That was my childhood. I'm not afraid. If you're afraid, you're an animal. And it's my right to kill animals. Bobby Prescott, do I look afraid? You know what I'm after. Come on, let me go, man. All I know is they took it away a month ago. I last heard that they had it on this island in Turkey. They're guarding it. But that's exactly what I'm after, Bobby. What do you mean after? I want it, and I will get it. Goodbye, Bobby Prescott. Look, you hired them, right? They've got bombs out there. You can't do this! Oh. 
Ah, Stephanie, so glad you could join me. Mr. Mulray tells me you were <laughs> studying the corporate structure of the Butler Institute. But it owned everything. Now keep calm, dear Stephanie. The company could have punished Mulray, but he was a promising young employee, and I like to think that I'm a good manager. I've always favored the carrot instead of the stick. Reward instead of punishment. So I not only led Mr. Mulray a promotion, I also explained about the Institute's latest and biggest project. I let him into the secret. And now you're going to let me in on it too? Daddy! Ah, oh, my little spy. This is my son, Patrick. Patrick, this is Mr. Mulray and Stephanie. Stephanie looked after you at the office yesterday, Patrick. I remember. Where was I? The project. Well, it's a big idea and a big challenge. But we live in times that offer big challenges. Challenges of survival. In this world, health is rapidly becoming a most precious commodity since our last few presidents. Stephanie, both you and Mr. Mulray are familiar with our use of surgery and transplants to maintain health. But do you know how difficult it is to find good stock? That's because the environment is increasingly compromised. We are poisoning the planet we live on. For decades, we've known the dangers and have insisted on doing nothing. We are reaching the point of no return. But the Butler Institute is taking action. We have the solution. It's quite a simple solution. A bright child can grasp the basic concept. Go on, Patrick. Explain the project to Stephanie. Daddy says that we live in our thoughts. We have bodies and things, but really it's all up here. So it doesn't matter if our arms and legs and bodies die, just so long as we can make our thoughts stay alive. And Daddy says that our thoughts are just patterns in our heads, and that we can copy those patterns, just the way I sampled Jack blood off the television. Clever kid. That's very good, Patrick. Real long. Daddy says we'll, we'll copy the patterns into computers, and the computers will last forever, and, and, and we'll live inside them, and it won't matter what the world's like outside, what the pol... pol... Po poly po pollution. It won't matter what the pollution is like, or the ozone layer, or anything, because we'll be safe inside the machines. No, that's not right. We aren't going to be inside the machines. We're going to be the machines. What a smart little guy. But our bodies will be dead, though. You are a smart little guy. Very, very smart. Brave, too. Big and brave. Tell Stephanie the rest of it. There's more. The next part of our project involves kids, and you'll never guess what. Patrick's volunteered for the experiment. Way to go, little guy. Excuse me for a second. I'll help more with the coffee. Of course. Now you've heard we can call Albany from here. Why would we want to do that? The man's clearly Looney Tunes. So is his project for that matter. <sighs> Fine. I'm happy to go along with it. He's the boss. I've done some hairy stuff in my time. It's been my job. I really am happy to provide parts from the Third World for Biostock. There are people who need that blood, and those bodies. Americans. Real people. But all that stuff about that little boy volunteering for the experiment? You know what that means? He's talking about killing the kid. Yes? We can't just let that happen. No? Stephanie. <sighs> I'm old and tired. Time for Jack Blood! You'd better go. Tell them breakfast will be ready soon. Breakfast is on? Good. Mulray, secure? He won't be a problem. Thought as much. No one's going to stop us, are they? Stop us? Who could stop us? Alright, Ace. Now it's your turn. Warren! What did you do this time, Sean? It's bad enough we're in Turkey. You don't have to shout when something goes wrong. He's ruining the round. Nothing's wrong on my end. When Warren gets back, I'm gonna kill him. Relax. Go to the bathroom and empty your damn bladder. That's why you're so tense. No, my body can wait. You going on about how his bladder can hold a lot again? Yeah. Anything interesting happen on patrol? Oh, quiet. Thought I heard something moving, but it was just the wind. Wasn't just the wind, mate. You better have kept an eye out. What the hell? Now get ready for a nice little nap. You can't... do this? Who the hell are you? No one important. 
And as you're the one tied up, I'll be asking the questions. What are you guys doing here? D don't don't tell that skank anything. And that is Sean. Hello, Sean. Skank, eh? I think it's time for a little interrogation. I've come to collect this for a friend. I don't know what it is and I don't particularly care. Obviously just a barrel. Nothing important and we've got nothing like it. Now don't lie to me. I know you've got it and my associates are ready for me to give a word to take it off your hands. Sean, just tell her where it is! Shut up, you suckhole! If you don't all- You won't do anything. You're tied up. We're never gonna tell you where it is. Why don't you start searching the island now? It'll only take you about three weeks. Sit down and rotate. None of us are saying anything. It's down on the beach. Guthrie! Buried just below the high water mark. We figured it would help keep it cool. Guthrie, what are you doing? Shut up, Sean! I'm sick of this. I wanna go home. Get a flashlight and I'll show you where it is. You should just leave it alone, you know. Leave it buried. We should all go home and leave it alone. I told you to act polite. Now you can stay here until I'm gone. Right, you two can come with me and get your colleague out when I'm gone. You don't know what you're doing. Probably not. We came here so nothing like this would happen. Nothing like what? You people, coming here with cards and taking it away. The government. We're not the government. No difference. What are you going to do now? Go back home. Back to the States. Our parents are worried sick. I guess it would have never worked. You? Oh, I'm leaving too. You're good people. Make your parents proud. This thing's full of liquid. Listen. Right. You'd better go untie your friend. Hey! Where are you going? To make some hell.